This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad, and I am glad. I don't know about you all, to be in the house of prayer once again. Are you glad to be in the yes. service? Amen. As Deacon Ross would say, glad to be in the service. One glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. Let us stand, please. Our choirs are already in the law. And I don't know about you all, we had a blessed time in Sunday school this morning as we start our service off. And also our testimony period. And at this time, we are now in the midst of our service. God is in the midst. Give him all that's his, and I guarantee you, you'll leave here with a worship experience. That's what it's all about. Amen. Now, I'll give you a minute to get your, to your responsive reading. It's found on the inside of your bulletin. It's coming from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, verses five, 53 through 56, and I'll give you a minute to get there. Once you've found it, give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. And we find these words. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Altogether, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am them. Wow, what a word. Our hymn of praise, the old rugged cross. And this is where it all started at. At the old rugged cross, for you and I, where our sins were paid a ransom that we could not pay. Everything that you have been afforded to up until this time, God purchased it right there. He gave us all that we could have all through him. And the best thing we get from him is his righteousness, which indulges us to become his children. When we believe, when we receive, and we accept what God has truthfully given us his way. That's when your purpose is established. That's when everything that you have really, really been made and purpose for comes into fruition. This is the great God of ours. Let's sing this song like we know it.
fight where he had fought the good fight of faith. And what was laid up for him at the end was a crown of life through the righteousness that Christ had given him. What happened at Calvary, and I'm not just talking about that wooden beam that you look at, but I'm talking about what happened there, what Jesus there did. He purchased your salvation. He purchased us off of the auction block that Satan had us on because we belong to Satan on our way to hell. But along came Jesus with his shed blood, yeah. without the removal of sin, the shedding of blood had to be there. He paid the price there at Calvary. Know what Calvary is all about. Your ransom was paid, a ransom that nobody, nothing else could pay but him. It's not just a wooden beam we talk about when we talk about Calvary, but we talk about what Christ did thereof. That's where your hope lies. Your hope has to be in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. What happened at Calvary? Teach it to your children. Let them know what Calvary is all about. He spoiled the principalities there. He took away the sting from death, sin, hell, and the grave. Yes. He took away all powers that the principalities Amen. have. You might say, well, if he did all that, why am I going through what I'm going through now? Your faith has to stand trial. It's going to be tested. But what happened at Calvary has happened. And you must rely on what he did there. You must know what he did there for yourself before you can help others in this endeavor. Amen. Woo! Oh, yeah. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you did at Calvary. Thank you for your mercy, your love, and your grace that transpired today because of what you did way back when. Black Chapel. Good morning. Let us pray. Our Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, so much for another opportunity to come into your house, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for that hope that Reverend Thompson just talked to us about, Lord. Lord, that hope that you put inside each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, that hope that you sent to the earth, Lord, to die for our sins, Lord God, we are just so grateful and thankful. Thankful, Lord, that you just loved us so much. Yes. That we, you loved us so much that you were just willing to give your son for us, yes. Lord. Lord God, we just truly thank you. Thank you. Lord, and we just want to also thank you, Lord, for brand new mercies each and every day, yes. Lord. Yes. Each and every day providing us with new opportunities, Lord, to get it right. Lord, we know that as we make this Christian journey, as we make this walk through life, Lord, we're going to have our ups and downs, our highs and the lows, Lord. Sometimes we're going to slip and fall, Lord. Lord God, but when our hope is in you, Lord, we know that as long as there's breath in these bodies, Lord, that there's another opportunity. Lord God, and we're just so grateful and we're so thankful, Lord, for today. We're thankful for today, Lord, for the breath that you provided for these bodies for today, Lord. Because in this day, Lord, it represents hope. It represents opportunity, Lord. It's another opportunity for us to get it right for ourselves. It's another opportunity, Lord, for us to help somebody else get it right in their lives, Lord. Lord, for that's a great charge that you provided each and every one of us with, Lord, in this life, Lord. If we've accepted you, Lord, our job, Lord, is to be that city that sits on the hill, Lord, that shines bright, Lord so that others might be attracted under your word, Lord. The others might be attracted under you, Lord. Lord, help us to be what we should be, Lord. Help us to be one that can draw others under you, Lord. Help us to be someone, Lord, that's not ashamed, Lord, to share your word, Lord. Help us, Lord, 
Help us, Lord, to be dedicated enough, Lord, to study your word so that we might rightly divide it. That we might rightly divide it, Lord, when the opportunity provides itself and presents itself for us, Lord. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord. And this morning, Lord, we just ask you for a spirit of boldness, Lord. A spirit of boldness, Lord. So again, when we are provided with opportunities, Lord, to represent you, Lord, that we're willing. That we're willing, we're ready, and we're able, Lord, to represent you, Lord, as we should, Lord, Lord God. And once again, Lord God, this prayer is not only for each and every one of us individually, Lord, but this is also a collective prayer, Lord. This is a prayer for us as a ministry, Lord. Lord God, help us to be what we're supposed to be, Lord. Lord, lead God in order the steps of this ministry, Lord, so that we might be what you're calling us out to be, Lord. Lord, so that we might be what this community needs us to be, Lord. Lord God, we know that you have all power, Lord. All power is in your hand, Lord God. And for that, we thank you. Lord, this morning, again, we just pray that you touch the leadership at this church, Lord, that you touch each and every body that's in this sanctuary, Lord. Lord God, because we need you. We know where our strength comes from this morning, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, and once again, we just pray, Lord, that we know that you're going to be faithful. Yes. We know that you're going to do what you promised, Lord. Yes, Lord. The question is, what are we going to do, Lord? Yes, Lord? And again, our prayer is, Lord, that you just continue to strengthen us. Lord, continue to show us the way, Lord, so that we can be more of who you have us to be. Not only this morning, Lord, but each and every morning, Lord, that you choose to give us breath. Thank you so much, Lord. We thank you so much for being the God that you are, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, these are all blessings. We pray for in our son Jesus' name this morning. Amen. This concludes our devotion for this morning.
down there. Okay. You know, Jesus told the people, if you don't praise, if you don't, what did he say? These rocks. See, I don't want no rocks, no birds, no trees, and nothing. Somebody said in Sunday school this morning, as long as this life, this air is in us, the Bible said, everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. How many of you actually came to magnify him? Amen. You came to glorify him. This is what it's all about. We didn't come in here to look pretty. We didn't come in here to show off our shoes. Our we didn't come in here for none of that. Because this God that brought us, that kept us, that is keeping us, and that's with us, didn't have to be, could have left us all somewhere out in the Amen. desert to die. But his love, his mercy, and his grace is here with us. And if oh, yeah. he don't give you enough love in you to look to your neighbor and give them a hearty smile. <laughs> some of you ain't caught on to it yet. Because some of you still like, what? Yeah, you don't know who I am. <laughs> you ain't nobody compared to him. No. Amen. Not to put nobody down, but it is what it is. When he gives you that love, that exuberant love, the first thing his spirit, the Spirit does when he comes and invades your life and encounters you as you have become a born-again, baptized believer is produce love because you need it. You think you don't need it? Look at this world in which we live in. Look at the person that's sitting next to you. And we're always thinking with this right here, you don't know me like you think you know me. I don't know you. No, you don't. But God knows us all, loves us all. And therefore, it expects us to love him and then to love everyone. Amen. Simple as that. If we do these two things, our lives would flow smoothly. Didn't say the opposition wasn't coming because it's here. But we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, the Christ himself. The one that's not dead, but he, is, he has long taking care of all of that and sits at the right hand of our Heavenly Father making intercession for you, me, and for all of us. And I tell him every day, Jesus, please, whatever you do, don't stop praying for me. I know I need you. Every minute, every second, every hour, every minute of the day, even in my sleep, I need you. I don't know about nobody else. But I always tell him, Dion Thompson right down here on planet Earth, given my physical address, he knows where I am, what I'm in need of, and I'm looking to him. Amen. Don't know about you all, but we just came to magnify him, to lift him up. Amen. To give him the glory while we are on this side. Because when we get to the other side, that's when you're going to really give it to him. Once again, as I said, we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Those of you who are not here, we greet and we hope and pray that you will come back. You would come back into the household. You would come back and just fellowship. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together for such as the man of some are. If you're listening by ways of the airways of, or however you're viewing us, we thank God for you. The same God is there over the airwaves as well because he's an omnipresent God. He's in every place at the same time. You can't do it. I can't do it. But he can. Amen. He will bless you there. He will keep you. But he wants you in the midst. He wants you in the midst of his people. He wants you here with us. He commands and tells us to do this. If we're going to obey anybody, we ought to obey him. We ought to listen to him and follow after him. And for those of you that are in our sanctuary this morning, you're visiting us, we thank God for you. Your name is not on Black Chapel's Road, but if you don't mind standing at this time, we want to acknowledge your presence because we realize you could have been anywhere, but you're here with us, and we thank God for you. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. They do. Amen. Yes. Yes, Chris. Amen. Let's give Chris a hand, everybody. Yes. 
so glad to have them and as brother Ransberg said these little fellows come to Sunday school and they enjoy Sunday school amen you can't tell me a child can't exceed a, an adult a, when when God is in the midst children understand more than what you give them credit for they understand better than some of us except we become as little children some of us we've got too big and too grown I mean, you can't tell me what to do oh, that's your problem that's your problem the spirit will tell you and show you what to do now it's up to you to do it and these little loved ones here, they show us. They show us. And Brother Ransberg and his mother, we thank God for you all as well. Is there anybody else in the house that's a visitor? Okay, if not, we always tell you and inspire you to trust God. Pray for this church and its ministry. Because in these last and treacherous and evil times in which we are living, the enemy is busy. He's doing his, his thing, but guess what? God is greater because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Amen. And if you get your mind set on Christ and anchored there, whatever comes your way, I guarantee you, God will keep you. We learned in Sunday school this morning, brand new mercies and brand new grace every day. Yesterday is past and gone. The mercies are gone. But today, everything is brand new. You have a fresh new start to get it right before you're stretched out across here when it's too late. I'm just giving it to you like it is. So let's hang on, let's hold on. And if that spirit of God is in you and dwells with you, stir it up. And be like the choir just got to sing. We came to magnify him. That's right. We Amen. came to glorify him, to lift him up. I'm not gonna let no rocks and nobody, nothing else stand in my place as long as I can do it. As long as I'm alive to glorify God, it's, he's going to be glorified. Amen. Now, are we perfect? No, but are we growing and maturing? Yes, we are. Flaws are there, and God is the one that removes them all every day. For some of you all that don't know that and think you're doing it yourself, because you're not. With that being said, our visitors that did stand, Maestro, you know what we, we do when our visitors are here. And we do love you, because our motto here is love me one another and we try to do that under the unction of God's spirit and not our own but under his First Lady's 34th anniversary is quickly approaching. On Sunday, July 21st, we'll be here before you know it. 2024, as we all know, and we do know this, our pastor is a very loving and a giving person. Mm -hmm. This man right here. Amen. Yes. Amen. John o. And don't call him Mac O'Neill. His name is Mac O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Mac. That's my pastor, I can say that, and I'm gonna take up for my pastor. <laughs> now, he is always just a call away, and that he is. When anyone is in need, this man is here. And Sister McNeil is with him as well. Amen. So you get a package deal. I'm saying this because I know it to be true. Now, he provides a prayer, a listening ear, and if you ever had a listening ear from this man, he, he'll listen, and guess what he gonna tell you? Not what he want to tell you, but he's going to tell you what God has instructed you. If you listen to him, you can hear him. I know this for a fact. Now, we are asking the church family and friends and anybody who possibly can and would like to bless our first family, if, you're gonna, if you can, donate a love offering or of $100. If you're going to give more, that's you. Amen. But 
remember, it's, it's better to give than it is to receive. Amen. So we just thank God for that. And then this is a, mo a momentous occasion. And we certainly thank God for our pastor. Because I can tell you this. I know of some pastors that want nothing but what's in your pocket. Could care less about your, your, your living, your lifestyle, your sins, and anything that you're going through. But this man gives us the word of God. He's there for us. He instructs us. And, and if you listen to him, you'll learn some things. And you won't have to bombard him after service about this, that, and the other because it comes through his word, through the word that God gives him. It, it actually does. Some people don't believe that and don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. And I'm telling Amen. you today because I know it to be true. Now, you can bank on that. Now, our second announcement, greetings from our men's and our women's ministry, which is headed by Evangelist Hill and by Brother Deacon Curtis Watson. The bowling event is going to be held this coming Saturday on July the 13th, 2024. The arrival time, please, is 3.30. He's going to be there at 3 o'clock. The game time starts at 4, and it ends at 6. And he wants you all to be there, those that are going to be there too, so that you can get the bowling effect that you need. You paid your money, you're coming out for the fellowship, so please be there. Amen. Brother Watson and, and Evangelist Hill have, have spearheaded this, and it is for those that are going to be there. And if you're going to be there, be there on time so you can get the full effects of it. Amen. And he's Amen. also going to be in the, the prayer room for those that have, have paid their monies or those that have any inquiries or anything pertaining to this. He'll meet you after service if you would just meet him in the prayer room immediately after service. And this also, remember, is going to be at the uh, Fanning Lane uh, Bowling Alley. That's 1155 Old Fanning Road. That's in Brandon. And he wished all good, and, 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 and notice now, he wished, he's wishing all good luck and may the best team roll stripes. Now that, that, that's, Deacon, that's Deacon Watson for you right there. He's wishing, he's wishing that, so in other words, he wants you to have a, a good time. He wants you to have a good experience. He wants you to have a, a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, number three, our General Missionary Baptist State Convention, choir rehearsal which the convention is, 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 is uh, underway or it's going to get underway. But the choir rehearsal is Friday, June the 28th at St. Luther's. At, it's going to be at 6 o'clock p.m. And if a group of songs, if, if you have any questions or any concerns, please see Dr. Lucille Brown. She's here. Which, which is Dr. Billington? In the choir right there. That lady right there, that, that Dr. Amen. Brown. She will show you and give you any information that you need pertaining to the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And also... This is a new birthday month. All of those of you that are July babies that are in the sanctuary, please stand. Amen. 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 Anniversaries uh, pertaining to this month, please get them to Sister Love and, and she'll get them on the other program. Any anniversaries that, that are coming up for this particular month. Now, also, our prayer list we have Sister Lakeisha Ballinger, let's keep her in our prayers. Amen. And Sister Dorcas Stickpin, who's under doctor's care, let us please keep her in our prayers Amen. as well. Because if we were in any situation, we would want someone to pray for us. That's what the church is about. If any is sick among you or what have you, call for the elders of the church. This is something we don't do, but this is something we need to start doing. Because if I get sick, I'm calling some people in here that I know I can call on. Some of you I might not be calling on, but I, some I'm going to call. I'm just, just keeping it real. And we also have Brother Kenneth Earl Bailey, which is the brother of our very own Cleveland Bingham. He was here on last Sunday. God has blessed him tremendously, and he knows where his blessings come from. Amen. 
And also we have Sister Aretha McMillan, who is the sister of Gracie Rattler. We have Sister Angela Taylor. We have Deacon Charles Bell, who is watching us as he always does, and you know what he expects of us, so let's not let him down. We also have Sister Mary Cooper, is the, which is the mother of Deacon Dennis Williams. Amen. We're keeping her in our prayers as well. And we also have Sister Tyler Pfizer, the nephew of Mother Wyndham, and also Sister Christine wants us to keep her family, the Anderson family, in prayer because they have been bereavements there. And if there's any other bereavements and what have you, please get that information to Sister Love and Amen. we'll convey it to the, to the church. But God is in the midst. He is here and he's ready and willing and able to keep us and he will do just that. And also, if you want your name placed on the prayer list or removed from the prayer list, please contact Dr. Lucille Brown at 601-672-7356 or Sister Diane Henley here at the church at 601-922-5090. These are our announcements, and please remember also that the nursery is always in need of volunteers as well. These are our announcements for today. May God bless you and richly keep you and bless us as well. Amen. Amen.
morning once again. Amen, amen. Uh, this is first Sunday, uh, Pastor's Aid Sunday. Could we have uh, two ladies join us uh, up front this morning? You, you. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's uh, now uh, offering time here at uh, Black Chapel. Uh, here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. Uh, you can give online uh, any, at any time. Uh, you can come through any day of the week also and drop off in the west end of the church in our drop box. Or you can give right here, right now in service. Uh, at this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers. Ushers, you are now in charge. Amen. We're to give thanks, and we continuously thank you, Father, for everything. Thank you for this offering. Those that had a desire to even give but had not the funds on this go round, Father, let them be able to give next time and let them give with a cheerful heart. Father, we just gave, and we know that you're going to bless, you're going to multiply, and you're going to, Father, succeed this offering for which it was taken. Father, we know that little placed in your hands become much. And we do thank you for the ones that are giving, Father God, that 
by way of the airwaves as well. We just continue, Father, praying, hoping that your love, your mercy, and your grace will just keep us. Give us a generous servant heart, Lord God, to be a servant of the Most High God, which is you. And Father, to lift up your name wherever we go and whatever we do. And Father, right now, we stop and we pause and we thank you for everything, Father. We thank you for those that are on our sick and our shut-in list. Father, we pray that you would just continue to bless them, Father. Let your peace, Lord, your mercy, your grace just envelop them, Father. Your healing hands, Father. Your healing hands, Father. Touch in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask and we only ask in Jesus' name. Our little brother Chris there, Father, and his mother. Father, just put your loving arms around them, Father, and just bless them, Father, tremendously. Father, they came today seeking you. Father, please don't let them leave the way they came. But just envelop them, Father God, and let them know that your love, your mercy, and your grace, and your spirit and our love is here for them. Yes. Brother Bell, Father, and many others, yes. continue to bless them and to keep them, Father. Those, Father, that are on our bereaved list, Father, we lift them up. Sister Anderson, Father, Sister Gwen Johnson and her family as well, many others, Lord. Father, let your peace that surpass with all understanding, Father, just cover them in the name of Jesus. And Father, those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally. Father, we pray your healing hands, Father, of mercy and grace be upon them. As that demonic man of Gadara, Father, was there, you touched him and look at what happened. Father, we know that you can touch and everything will be made whole. Everything will be made well, Father. And for this, we cry out to you and to you alone. But first and foremost, we come back like one of the lepers and we thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do. In the precious, the mighty, and the powerful, in the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. All things. All things. Come on,
set us free. Let me go. Let me go. Set me free. And it's just because. Just because. You know when Belinda was here, she would sing it. Denise would sing it. But you better recognize. See, God will do it all the time. I've been waiting on this song for a long time. Because I know it's me. I know what's behind it. You can't tell me. Ain't nobody gonna stop God's program. Nobody. Nothing. Just because. Just because. Just because he's God. Oh, just because. Just because. of him that we live that we move and that we have our very own individual being is all the cause of him And whenever we come into his presence, and let it be known, his presence fills both the heavens and the earth. And whenever we come into his presence, we should humble ourselves and lift up holy hands and worship him. Just because we've been washed. In the blood of the Lamb. And without the shedding of that Lamb's blood, there would not have been any remission of sin. Meaning that all of us may as well had have been born still dead. 
Because apart from God, you are spiritually dead. And let it be known that each and every one of us were born spiritually dead. Physically and morally alive, but spiritually dead. Because all of us were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. And the wage of sin always has been, is, and always shall be death. Born on death row, eternal death row, but God, but God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And it's all because he was willing to shed his blood on Calvary that we may live and have life more abundant. Abundant life. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for his omnipresent, which gives us an always reason to lift up holy hands and to worship him. Regardless of where you are, what you're doing, what you're going through, what you're in the midst of or just came out of, you are never without reason to lift up on the hand and say, Lord, I thank you and worship and praise him. Just because of his presence alone, after he saved you, just because of his presence alone, there is reason to worship and praise the Lord. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's hope. There is a way. There is an alternative. Alternative. There is light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how dark it may appear to be, just because of his presence alone, there's hope. There is a way out of the appearance of that no way. He is a way out of no way. That's why he tells us in, in, in the Gospel of John that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's give this great choir another round of applause. But once again, just reminded us of who he is and whose we are. He is the maker, the creator, the giver, and the sustainer of all. And we are his children. And he is not a dead beat father. He takes care of his own. What a blessing. Oh, how blessed and fortunate we are to be a present attendance of such a time in such a place, in the presence of such an activity where the Lord God is being worshiped and praised lively. Yeah. We're fortunate to have other alternatives and other ways in 
means to go about being a witness to such. But God desire of us to be a living witness. A live witness. Not just by way of breath and heartbeat. But by way of personal appearance. And that is one of the reasons why he say, forsake not. If I give you an opportunity to be a witness, a living witness, a live witness, witnesses, witnessing unto it as it unfolds, as worship and praise unfold in his presence and in our very presence. That is where he will us to be. in the presence of live witnessing. And there is no better place to be in the presence of such than within the Lord's house itself. Thank God for all the alternatives that he has put in place Thank God for all the opportunities that he has made available. But when God gives, he gives his very best. And when God gave us life another day, he expects us to get out of it, all that he plays in it for us. Amen. And that is to be a living, mm -hmm. live, and in color. Yeah. Yeah. See, some of us may have just black and white television. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you miss out on the color. Right. <laughs> you see, if, you, if, if you're not fortunate enough to have a color television, sitting at home watching worship service, you're going to miss out on the color. But when it's live and in living color, you're breaking big sticks. You're in tall timber. You have truly, tremendously been blessed, and you're taking advantage of the blessing. You see, all of us have been blessed, whether you're watching a black and white or color, but you're not taking advantage, full advantage. When you're watching black and white. All right. When you could be watching in living color. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> My granddad used to always tell me, boy, I don't care how thirsty a mule may get. You can lead him to the water. But I declare you can't make him drink. <laughs> and our mission as born again baptized believers, our primary mission is to lead the mule to the water. And it's up to the Lord. To make him cry. Amen. So every Sunday morning at 9.30, that is what's taking place here in the house. The mule has been given an opportunity to drink. And as far as we can go, open the doors and allow the mule entrance in to drink of living water. The water that God primarily desired of us to drink of. 
but he has made it possible for us to drink out of bottled water. I've always wanted the best that God has to offer for me. The best. Amen. As long as the best is available. And as long as I have my reasonable portion of health and strength, I should be able to acquire the best. Lord has blessed me with an automobile, clothes to put on my back, a little gas in the tank, a reasonable portion of health and strength. So why shouldn't I get up in the morning when he blessed me with life, get dressed, climb into my automobile, and drive just a couple miles to receive the best that God has to offer of me pertaining to that subject matter. Let's give this quiet note. We can't, we, can't, we, we, we can't thank them enough for just giving themselves the way they give themselves unto the call of God and into the service of his people. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. Well, the Lord has blessed us with so many wonderful, beautiful opportunities and they are continually being birthed. You know, I, I thank God for you know, for the last month or so every time women here in the ministry has been blessed with a birthday how they gather themselves together and they come together in fellowship and she just been telling me about the wonderful times they've been having and this and that and this and that. And I thank Sister Catherine and Lacey, Lacey for all the great things that she has did for ministry where the women come together and celebrate their birthdays with one another by going out and eating and drinking and having a good time. Thank God for the Watsons that Evangelist Hill for the men, the men and the women ministry that gives them an opportunity outside the sanctuary to congregate and just have a wonderful, beautiful time Amen. celebrating him by fellowshipping with one another Amen. in a wonderful, beautiful atmosphere when all God's people come together, regardless of where it may be. What a time. What a time. What a time. And I invite all of those of you who have not as of yet take advantage of all the opportunities that God has put in place for you. From the Gospel of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, the first through the 18th verse. And there we will find these words. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes mourned, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a, an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, do it not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness? And go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, 
For I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do it not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, and he said, and he said, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Amen. 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 I will arrive and go to my father. After experiencing the two different experiences. One was the experience in which he experienced at home with father. Mm -hmm. And the other was the experience in which he experienced away from home, from his father. And after doing the bad, His conclusion was, I am going to go back home. He said, I will arise and go. I will arise and go. To my father. There was no question nor doubt in that son or in that child's mind that he could not go back. When he thought of that thought. He did not have a second thought pertaining to that thought. 
about whether he could or not. Which suggests that one thing that young son knew, and that was that in spite of the choices and the decisions in which he had made, that proved to be all wrong. But in spite of all of that, he knew beyond the shadow of any doubt that he could go back home. And unto those who suffer a need pertaining to that situation, let it be known that you too can go back home. So let us think on that thought. In spite of all the spites, in spite of all the buts, in spite of all the I don't know, I don't know, you can If you hadn't already, go back home. If you hadn't already, Don't waste any time contemplating about that subject matter. You can't go back home. This parable about the lost son is the third parable of a series of three parables. Amen. In which Jesus told unto the Pharisees after they had criticized him for fellowship and for eating with the publicans and the sinners. This parable about the lost son is the third parable of a series of three parables about the lost that Jesus shared with the Pharisees after they had belittled him about fellowshipping and eating with the publicans and the sinners. Now a parable is nothing more than a short story about a common situation that conveys a divine ideal. And in that first parable, 
And Jesus asked the Pharisees, what shepherd among you who have a hundred sheep and just one of those sheep, just one, become lost. Would not leave the ninety and nine in place in the wilderness and go in search of the one and then he say, until. Yeah. Right. <laughs> until. Meaning that if need be, you would search every valley. Yeah. Right. If need be, yeah. you would search every ravine. Yeah. If need be, you would search every mountain top until you find that lost sheep. Whether he be alive or dead, you're going to search until you find that lost sheep. Whether he be alive or dead, but if alive, you're going to take that sheep Lay him across your shoulder and carry him all the way back unto the fold while along the way rejoicing. Cry out unto all the spectators, come and, and, and rejoice with me because my lost sheep has been found. This parable is telling us that man is very concerned and that man is willing to go way out of his way in search for lost property. We're very concerned and we'll go way out of our way in order to retrieve lost property. Man is very concerned and he will go way out of his way in order to retrieve lost property. And then he's told this parable about the lost coin. In how this same woman had ten pieces of silver. And one night right before she got ready to go to bed. She counted those coins. And to her surprise. One of those coins was missing. Right before she got ready to go to bed. She discovered that one of those coins was missing. And that woman was not about to go to bed. Because that woman knew that she could not rest, that she could not sleep until she found that lost coin. So what did she do? The Bible says she lit a candle. All right. All right. <laughs> Got back up out of bed yeah. and lit a candle. And searched the entire house. And when she couldn't find that one lost coin by searching the entire house, then she got a broom. 
And she began to sweep the entire house. She swept beneath every bed. She swept beneath every rug. She moved all of the furnishing. And she swept beneath every piece of furniture until she found that lost toy. And then she went running throughout the entire neighborhood, waking up the entire neighborhood, saying, come and rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. Which suggests that we will stay up all night and we will search both high and low to find lost money. There's no going to bed. There's no resting. There's no sleeping until you find that lost money. Especially when you have a thought, an ideal is in the house. This money should be in the house. And I'm not going to stop looking until I find it. We will stay up all night long. And we will search both high and low. In order to find lost money. And then he told the parable. About the lost son. And how this father had two sons. And, 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 and the youngest son came unto the father and said, Father, give it unto me the portion that belongs to me. And the father did just that. Gave unto him his righteous portion. That he had stored up for him. Not that the child had earned it, but the father had stored it up. And he went off to a far country. And while out there in that far country, he wasted all of his substance. In riotous just living. And then he became in want and no one <clears throat> knew where that law of sign was Amen. no one knew what was happening or taking place with that, no one knew. And not only did no one know where he was and not what was going on with him, but no one went searching for him. No one went searching for that lost son. No one went searching for that lost brother, that lost nephew, that lost uncle, that lost cousin, that lost neighbor, that lost co-worker, or that lost friend. No one went looking for that lost child. No one. Why? Because no one knows the virgin possibilities that are woven into the fabric of a lost soul until it would have been seduced by God's word and impregnated by the Holy Spirit and been born again. No one knows 
the hidden possibilities that are woven into the fabric of a lost soul until it would have been seduced by God's word, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and been born again. You see, none of us were born with a halo over our head. None of us were born with a cross around our necks. None of us were born with a Bible beneath our arm. But all of us were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. All of us were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. But when we became seduced by God's word, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and became born again, then we became deacons and trustees. Then we became ushers and choir members and musicians. Then we became mothers and sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Then we became disciples of Jesus Christ. And the primary mission of a disciple of Jesus Christ is to go out to the four corners of the world and search every valley, search every ravine, search every mountain top, sweep beneath every bed, sweep beneath every road, sweep the entire house until we find that lost sheep, until we find that lost coin, until we find that lost son. That is the mission of every born again baptized believer to go and search for. Amen. No one knows the virgin possibilities that are woven in the fabric of a lost soul until it would have been seduced by God's word, impregnated by the Holy Spirit and been born again. But there is one thing we do know about the power and the influence of one. Meaning that we know enough about one. To get us out of our comfort zone and go seeking and searching for that lost son, that lost brother, that lost father, that lost uncle, that lost cousin, that lost friend, that lost neighbor, that lost co-worker. Just because of what we know about the power and the influence of one. When one drop of rain. One falls into the ocean and increase the entire content of the ocean. One drop of rain. That's all it takes. That's why it didn't take but one Jesus. The power and the influence of one. No one knows the virgin possibility that are woven into the fabric of a lost soul until that soul become seduced by God's word, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and be born. When one drop of rain falls into the ocean, it increases the entire volume of that ocean. When you take one grain of salt out of its container, it reduces the entire volume of that container. One kick of a second hand on a clock brings an entire year to its end and began a new one. And when we look at it through the spiritual eye, when one soul becomes a better soul, this world becomes a better world for all of us to live in. When one soul becomes a better soul, this entire world becomes a better world for all of us to live in. All of us. And let me tell you something, Black Chapel. When we first proceeded forth out of our mother's womb, Every one of us, when we first proceeded forth out of our mother's womb, we left our father's house. We left that place of refuge. We left that place of resource that God had stored up for us. We left that place where God fed us when we were hungry, clothed us when we were naked, sheltered us when we were homeless. And as soon as we proceeded forth out of
of our mother's womb, we went off to a far country. And as soon as we got out into that far country, we started to waste our substance in righteous living. We started to waste our time, waste our influence, raise our character, and waste our spiritual inheritance in righteous living. In righteous living. But let me tell you something, Black Shepherd. No matter how long you've been living in that far country, no matter what all you've done while you were living out there in that far country, you can always come back home. You can always come back home. If you hadn't came back home yet, you can always come back to your father's house. Why? Because your father is looking for you. Your father is waiting on you. Your father is looking for you. Your father is waiting on you because your father loved you and he loved you with unconditional love. With unconditional love. Meaning he loved you not just because of, but he loved you in spite of. In spite of. Meaning that you're very special to God. You're very special to God. Do you have any idea how special you are to God? The one rule you. Do you have any idea just how special you are to God? Well, let me tell you a little something about how special the oneness of you are to God. Before you proceeded out of your mother's womb, your biological father injected your mother with six million sperm cells. And your mother had in her uh, in her womb a deadly bacteria which is known as spermicide and the purpose of that spermicide was to destroy every living sperm cell that entered into your mother's womb and out of the six million four million of those sperm cells were immediately killed off immediately destroyed in making first contact with that spermicide and the other two million while in route to conception had to go through other deadly bacteria that were found inside of your mother's womb and out of the two million one million nine hundred ninety nine thousand and ninety nine didn't make it but one got through because God let you through God let you through out of five million nine hundred ninety nine thousand and ninety nine that started out with you that didn't make it God let you through God let you through because you're special to God you be out of number the size of the population of New York City out of five million nine hundred ninety nine thousand and nine hundred that started out with you that didn't make it God let you through God let you through you're very special to God you're very special to God don't let no one blow your mind by trying to tell you how special you are to them by saying you know what you're one out of a million he said no baby I'm way more special than that in God I'm one out of six million because out of five million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand and nine hundred that started out with me that didn't make it God let me through God let me through no matter how long you've been out there in that far country, no matter what all you've done out there in that far country, you can always come back home because you have a father that's looking for you. You have a father that's waiting for you. You have a father that loves you with unconditional love, not because of, not just because of. No matter what you've done out there, no matter what you're doing out there, you can always, don't you be deceived. And especially don't you become a victim of self-deceit. I've been doing this too long. I've been out there too long. I've done too much of this and I've done too much of that. You can always go back home. Go back home. Because you have a father who cares. And let it be known that as soon as each of us proceeded forth out of our mother's womb, we left the place of provision that God had put in place for us. That place where he fed us when we were hungry, clothed us when we were naked, sheltered us when we were homeless. And as soon as we proceeded forth out of our mother's womb, we entered into the far country.
just for you and I. By being a citizen of a fuck country and not of heaven. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. That son was a unisex son. That son was both male and female. Uniracial. Black, white, green, yellow, red, purple, blue. Because as soon as we proceeded forth out of our mother's womb, we started our journey into that far country, away from the place of provisions that God had already stored up for you. Food for you to eat, water for you to drink, clothing for you to wear and a shelter, a roof over your head that God had put in place. And after nine months, when we left our mother's womb, we also left the Lord's house and started our journey into this far country. And the longer we stay out there in that far country, the more we waste. And famine follows waste. And that is one of the reasons why we're living in a spiritual famine world. In a spiritual famine world. Because famine always follows waste. And every day, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, we can very easily find ourselves wasting our substance in riotous living. When all along, when all the time, we can go back home. And to those of us who have not as of yet gone back home. It's time to go home. It is time to be about the Father's business that he had already put in place for his child. You see, that father had plans for that child. That biological father had, that's why he had stored up an inheritance. He had plans for that child. He had paved the way to execute those plans he had put in place for that child. The father had paved the way. And all the child had to do would be to go in the way of the father. That's all he had to do. ways are pleasing unto God he will make even his enemies to be at peace the father had him covered from the crown of his head unto the sole of his feet his father had him covered the door of the church is open by way of letter Christian experience or candidate for baptism if you're here this morning, will you come? If you're here this morning, will you come? The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. 
If you're part of our viewing audience and something has been said or something has been done throughout the activity of our worship service here at Black's Chapel, that in some way, shape, form, or fashion, it has led or inspired you into coming to yourself. And you realize that it doesn't have to be this way. Or it doesn't have to remain this way. If the way is not God's way for you, it doesn't. If the way is not the way that God will for you, it doesn't have to be that way. The door of the church is open unto you. And all you have to do, by way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, all you have to do is just key into our comments section, the inbox, your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual memo, and I will personally connect with you. And we will process your situation. It's time. To come back home. It is time to leave the far country and make your way back unto the Father's house. The Father's house. Where he has already laid up all the provisions that you would ever need during your earthly stay in this temporary house that he has put in place for you. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or caring for baptism. If you're here, will you call? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God. We thank God for all that he has allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of our Sunday morning worship service. We thank God for all of our members. We thank God for all of our visitors who came out to share with the Black Shepherd family live and in living color. We thank God for all of our virtual members. We love you and we thank God for you. It is a blessing and a gift to have you as a part of us. We thank you for all that you've done and all you're doing and for all that you're going to continue to do. But as Paul said, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man all the blessings that God has stored up for those who believe and those who obey him. So let us put forth our greatest effort, effort to be that recipient of those treasures that God has already stored up for us, his children. And being in the right place at the right time has a whole lot to do with being that recipient. There's a season and there's a time for everything which are under the heaven. And God has already put in place the proper seasons and the proper times. We can't do anything to change a season and we can't do anything to alter the time. We call it daylight saving time. But that sun is going to rise when God say rise and it's going to set when the Lord says set. Regardless of what I watch it say. We're getting ready now to partake of the Lord's Supper. Those of you who can and will, please, ma'am, please sir, remain with us and do this as Jesus asks of us to do in remembrance of him. May God continue to bless you and keep you till we go back in the back and come back and prepare ourselves to serve you.
let us give thanks. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, with bowed heads and with humbled hearts, we yield before the throne of grace. First of all, Lord God, thanking you for you. Because we know that beside you, there is no other God. And oh, how blessed and fortunate we are to belong unto you, especially by way of new birth. We thank you for this occasion that we are in the midst of right now. And that is in remembrance of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Carrying out the will that he willed unto those who know him in the part of their sins. And that it was and that is to do this as often as we will in remembrance of him. How can we ever forget? We thank you, Lord God, for allowing him to be that perfect sacrifice that rendered up that perfect blood that carried the ingredients that would wash away the sins of this world. As we prepare to partake of this feast on this table, we pray that you just breathe upon it, sanctify it, cleanse it. And Father, also when it comes to us, if there's anything on our minds or in our hearts that's not pleasing unto you, Father, we desire for it to be removed as far as the east lies from the west. Because, Father, we want your presence here with us as we dine in your house at your table. Pray, Lord God, that we continue to be those faithful followers, those disciples that he assigned to go out to the four corners of the earth. Search every valley. Search every ravine. Search every mountaintop, sweep beneath every bed, every rug, behind every piece of furniture until we find, until we find that lost sheep, that lost coin, that lost son, father, husband, brother, cousin, nephew, friend, neighbor, co-worker. Because, Father, you know exactly what you have invested in each of us and either it is good or it is very good and we have a need for that in which you've put in place for us as we partake of this bread and drink of this wine we do indeed do it in remembrance of him amen amen
Let us prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper by removing the first layer of protection. This is the bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was bruised for the remission of all of our sins. Let us now eat. And now the second layer of protection. This is the wine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of all of our sins. Now let us drink. After Jesus' disciples had eaten of the Lord's Supper, they rose, sung a hymn, and marched out unto the Mount of Olives. Let us all please stand for the singing of our hymn, which will be followed with fellowship. Our hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 